Calendly is a super popular scheduling tool that allows businesses and marketers to streamline the process of making appointments with clients. And many, many chat users want to know, how do I integrate these two awesome tools together? Hey everyone, my name is Kelly Noble Mirabella and on behalf of ManyChat, today I'm going to show you how to integrate Calendly with ManyChat. So let's jump right in. The very first step is obviously create a flow and we're going to ask whatever information we want to ask from that end user. But keep in mind that we want to follow suit with how our Calendly form is set up. So let's head over to Calendly and I'll show you how I've set up my form. So in Calendly, if you go into editing of your particular calendar, you can actually go to invitee questions here and you can see that I have the basic questions that all Calendly calendars ask for, which is their name and email address. And I've also created a phone number here. And that's because I'm doing a phone call. So I will need their phone number in order to complete that task. So these are the things in which order I need to do inside of my ManyChat flow. So let's head back over to our flow. And the first thing I asked was an email address. And we use a user input for that in the reply type of email. Make sure that we take out skip because it is a required field inside of Calendly. And then we want to save our response in a custom field. So I have email address here. Our next step is to ask for the phone number, which is the step right after email here in our Calendly, because we know that we can automatically pull their names. So we're not worried about that. So we want their phone number. So our flow, we're going to ask for their phone number. The reply type is going to be phone. We're going to take out the skip feature because we do need their phone number in order to have a phone call with them. And again, we're going to save this to a custom field. In this case, I've labeled it phone underscore number. Finally, we need them to go ahead and set the time and date that works for them. Now, this is where we're going to use custom parameters. So we're going to create a button and we're going to do a link. Now, here is the link that we're going to use. The first thing you're going to need to grab is your custom Calendly link. That's basically this right here. As you can see, this is mine. And the way you grab that is go over to Calendly, go to your calendars, and you'll see right here, copy link. So that's what I did. I copied this link and I pasted it in to this box, the website box. But now we need to add our parameters. So the next thing that you want to put in is your question mark name. That's this question mark name equals. And then you're going to use these little brackets here to pull up first name, last name, full name, whatever you want. We're going to do full name here. So I went and put that parameter full name. Then I did and email equals because after I asked for the name on my Calendly form, I asked for their email and it is equal to, and again, we're using that custom parameter, which we grab right here, which is the custom field that we saved our email address in. So you just use that custom field. And then we do and A1. Now A1 stands for question one. And this would basically be any question on your Calendly form that falls after the name and email, the two required things that they put in there. Answer one is basically what that stands for. Well, we're asking for their phone number. So and a one, so and answer one equals the parameter is phone number. If you had something else, say it's company name and you ask for a company name here, then you would save that to the custom field and the parameter for a one would be the custom field company name or what have you and so on and so forth. Now, if you had further questions that you asked on your form, then it would be and a two equals and a three equals and so on and so forth. But we just have name, email, phone number. So again, this top part is our custom link to our calendar. And then we put in our parameters, question mark name equals parameter full name and email equals parameter email address and a one equals parameter phone number. That's it. We're done. So what this will do automatically is open up the Calendly schedule page. They'll pick their time and date and it will fill in the form for them. So they don't have to fill it in. It'll fill in based off all the information you got inside of the messenger bot. So at this point, you don't have to do anything else. Calendly has sent an email to the end user with their confirmation details. But if you want to send the confirmation details inside of the messenger bot as well, then we're going to have to use a little magic, a little trickery. And that's what this next section is all about. So we're going to need to use a tool called Zapier. So our first step is actually to create 
a custom field where we are going to save that user's details in terms of the time and date when their meeting is gonna take place. So to do that, we're gonna to go to settings, we're going to go to custom fields, and we are going to set our custom field. Now in this case, I already have a custom field called appointment date. It's actually going to save the date and time. You don't have to set both of these. It's gonna pull in all the information, so just do one. So now we're gonna to go to Zapier, and Zapier is kind of an in-between. It's gonna help us take information from ManyChat and Calendly, and they're gonna to talk to each other. And in this case, we want to make it so that Calendly is going to send the information for that appointment, the date and the time, over into that custom field so that we can send that user all the information right inside of the Messenger bot. The very first step is we're gonna to go to our trigger right up here. And our first step is select Calendly. We want to make Calendly the first step. So this whole thing will not trigger unless the end user actually creates an appointment. So we create Calendly and we have two choices. Did the invitee cancel this appointment or did they create an appointment? In this particular case, we are looking for created. So we're gonna go with that. And then you have to choose your Calendly account. You're going to need to connect an account if you haven't done so. Now, if you're connecting an account, it's going to ask for your API. And that's actually really easy to find in Calendly. Just go over to Calendly here. Just go to integrations. And right there at the top, you'll see your API code. Just copy and paste that into that box so that you can connect. Now I already have mine connected. We're gonna test it. It works, continue. It's gonna pull a sample size for us just so we can test that the connection works, continue. And then we're gonna have it talk to many chats. We're gonna select many chat here. Now we want to set the custom field. That custom field that we just created to save the time and date, that's what we're talking about. So we're gonna set the custom field and click continue. Then you need to select the ManyChat page that you want to use. So we're going to go ahead and select their name. We're going to select the custom field that we want to save that information to, which is the custom field we created. And we are going to select the value which we want to fill that in. This is from Calendly. We're gonna look for the pretty stuff. Event start time pretty, that's what I meant by pretty. And basically what's that saying is that it's the pretty version of the event start time. It doesn't look like this one right here. It looks like this one, we want that. And continue. Now we're gonna run a test and everything looks great. It saved all the information. We're gonna continue and we're gonna turn it on. Now we're back over in ManyChat in our Calendly flow and we're gonna set up the rest of the flow. So the first part is just getting that information and sending it over to Calendly. They've created their time on the Calendly app and now we want to send them a confirmation. So the next step is to create a delay. Now you might notice I have an action here to tag them. That is optional. You do not have to have that. That's more of just for my records so that I could go back and see who has set up appointments. So you don't have to have that, but the next part you will want to set up. So automatically continue. I put in a one minute delay and this just gives people time to look at their calendar, look at my calendar and pick a time that works best for them. And then it's going to go to a condition and I have the app underscore date has any value. And that is the condition that I use to save the time and date from Zapier. So it, Zapier is gonna send over that information. So if there's information in there, we know they've set an appointment. So if it has value, then the answer is yes. And we can direct them directly over to our confirmation message, which will read, great first name. Here is your appointment information. Then I just use that condition right there and it's gonna fill out their information. If you need to make changes, please check your email for those details. Okay, so if they have no, that means there's no value, they haven't set that appointment yet, they have not selected their time and date, so it's gonna go to another delay. I'm gonna give them another minute. Maybe they got distracted, maybe they have a really hectic schedule and it's hard for them to find a time, great. Go back into the exact same type of condition. We're gonna check again. If yes, we go over to our confirmation. If no, I'm gonna give them one more minute. You don't have to do that. I went ahead and set up three minutes here. So one more minute, it's gonna check again. And then this time, if no, I'm gonna do a follow-up message. Mine just says, I see you have not scheduled your appointment yet. Did you still want to do that? If yes, I'm gonna send them here, which just says great. And then for the schedule now, again, I'm using my custom link with parameters. 
and we already have their name and email because we know they've already gone through this process. So we're gonna go ahead and continue here. And if they say no, thank you, then we're just gonna say, that's cool, great, have a great day. So at this point, I think it's best that we just go ahead and preview what this looks like. So the first message here is at the bottom. It says, please confirm your email address below. So I click that. It's now gonna ask me to confirm my phone number and then it's going to have me schedule my appointment which is going to open up into the native Calendly view and I'm gonna select the 8th and we'll just do 9 a.m. As you can see, everything is already filled out because of those parameters and I'm gonna go ahead and click schedule event. About a minute later, there is my confirmation. It says, great Kelly, here's your appointment information. As you can see, it pulled it perfectly, 9 a.m. on Monday, July 8th. If you need to make changes, please check your email for those details. There you go. That's all you need to make your Calendly and your ManyChat work in unison.